हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे सिक्सटींथ ऑफ मार्च एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल एट द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइज इन द टुडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर ऑल आर्टिकल्स विद बैकग्राउंड एंड वे फॉरवर्ड वी आर गोइंग टू सी एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल विच इज एंड द लिंक फॉर चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब नाउ starting up uh, first of all let's see overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in today's newspaper so uh, the first article export falls 8.8% trade deficit shrinks over 7% so basically guys uh, in the february the outbound shipments the exports it has been reduced so basically here guys the patterns and the numbers are being given now you need to be mindful about the movement of the export sector but month by month the data is not very much important that you should remember by heart because these datas will change by the time you'll write your exam a governor cannot precipitate the fall of an elected government supreme court so guys uh, yesterday also we have seen this particular thing that in the telangana government has filed a petition in supreme court with respect to the governor's office that governor is obstructing the passage of bill that has been cleared by the government that legislative assembly now and i have also told you in yesterday's class that there are many issues on the office of governor visa vis chief minister which has come where the elected governments are saying that the deliberately governor is trying to create obstructions and all such kind of a things now here it has been provided that if for example there is a state government where some ruling party has formed the government okay or sorry if let's say there is a state state in which oppose some other political party has formed the government then the governor should not create road blocks governor should not help or precipitate the uh, falling of that chosen government that is something which has been provided then further moving on after that coming to the city section cm extends old excise policy not very important article for our examination so these regional issues political issues we need not to go too much in detail here fine so further moving on guys in this particular direction again these advertisements have been given we reach to editorial page and in editorial first article uh, brahmapuram as a policy game changer for kerala we'll see this article with respect to the examination then going on china india and the promise of power of two so guys this particular article is written by ma jia who is ambassador of china so we'll see that what the article is talking about fine then further moving on sharp divides aukus pact should serve as a deterrent so we have seen that the australia uk and us have jointly started this aukus so what are the key takeaways what are the key uh, what what are the key information that we need to see all that thing will be taken up here then guys this particular article is talking about the aftermath of the silicon valley bank which recently got collapsed then further moving to next page a sustainable model for women's leadership so guys we'll see this particular article so this article is actually giving a kind of a comprehensive picture with respect to the women's empowerment the areas where we should focus upon and all such things we'll take this article then further state of the play article uh, raj bhavan versus pragati bhavan the telangana government moves to supreme court against the governor then guys uh, friction over formula why some states uh, get more from the center so here uh, different different state governments allocations have been given okay so that is the, the thing then coming to text and context on reservation for women in politics so this is a very good article for our gs paper number 1 and 2 we will see this particular article then further moving on uh, from culture to climate change new books on history map the world's crossing points so guys this particular article uh, it is talking about the premise of the books and the themes that they have taken up here then further moving on in this particular direction foreign lawyers firms can operate in india says bci okay so uh, the basically the bci uh, uh, the bar council of india has opened up or has framed the rules by which the lawyers who have been who 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 have got educated abroad they can practice in india now uh, the point is that do you need to go and track this article too much not necessarily for our examination then further moving on guys after that uh, we see here uh, opposition uh, parties political articles largely have been given so we will be moving on house panel questions huge cut in outlay for mg narega now this issue is going on since this budget we have seen that mg narega's funding has drastically been reduced around 60000 crore rupees have been given for mg narega and now it has been provided that in last two years successively mg narega's funding has been revised for example if i just give you an idea it is being provided here fine so just to get an idea it has been provided here that for example in 2020 2021 
fine around 1 lakh 11000 crore rupees were allocated then uh, it was provided that uh, in 21 22 it was hiked from 73000 crore to 99000 crore so around 1 lakh crore rupees have been given to mg narega in past 2 years and now why such a drastic reduction has been there still there is a lot of desperation in rural areas with respect to the livelihood job opportunities so such reduction should not have been there such kind of things are there but guys beyond that much important substance is not given in this article so no need to go too much in detail Eurasian Otter raises hopes for J&K stream. We'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Then further moving on, amid clashes, police retreat from Imran's residence after court order. So guys, we see then this Pakistan political crisis is going on. No need to track it. Russia races to retrieve drone wreckage from Black Sea. Okay. Then further moving on here, uh, trade policy may be revised after eight years. So we will see the foreign trade policy, which has not been revised from such a long time. Then Europe's bank stocks skid on crude uh, credit, so is Sensex dips by 0.59%. You are not required to go too much and track these patterns in stock market and all such kind of things. Okay. And then we have the sports pitch. So this is overview of entire newspaper. And now let's discuss relevant articles that are important for our exams and the articles which contain some academic substance. Now let's discuss them one by one. Okay. So starting up. Now, uh, in every class, guys, we start with the GS quotation, which can be used to complement our answers in GS 1, 2, 3, 4 or in essay. So today, we'll take the quotation from Albert Schutzer. Albert Schutzer, he says, until, uh, until, we extend the uh, un until he extends the circle of his compassion to all living things, man will not himself find peace. So, guys, often we think that when we will be selfish, when we will be self-centered, when we will keep our concerns at the top and when we will address only them, we will be happy. So many times people become self-loathing, they become self-centric, they become self selfish and they forget about the concern of other people, about the concern of other species. Okay, And that is a wrong approach. So it has been said that when the man will extend the circle of his compassion to all the living things, other men, men women belonging to ex caste belonging to other caste belonging to different religions and when we extend that circle of compassion even to other life forms even to other life forms then we will be truly be able to find happiness we will truly be able to find peace so peace is not making yourself happy but peace is searching your happiness in the happiness of other people okay we can use this particular idea in gs paper number four ethics as well as in essay now moving to the first article now this article we have taken from text and context section and the article reads on reservation for women in politics. Now this article we will see with respect to GS paper number one Indian society social issues as well as in GS paper number two social justice. Within social justice vulnerable sections women uh, actually are important ones for, and whose welfare we need to ensure. So we will take that. Now starting with uh, the article. So basically, uh, let me give you some brief idea first of all. So guys, when we talk about the population of men versus women, okay, so their population stands to be nearly 50-50%, 50% men, 50% women, roughly, okay. But in political representation, in leadership position or in the position where decisions have to be made, women's representation is always been very much less because of the patriarchal nature of society. What society has done? Society has fixed gender roles and in that gender role, men have been given the role of decision making, role of earning the bread for the family, role for being the leader and all such thing. And on the other hand, women has been given the role of doing the household work, care responsibilities have been imposed on them. Okay, and if I give you some number, guys, right now in the present Lok Sabha, out of the total number of MPs that are there, only 14% MPs are women, which actually is very much less. And one of an way to increase the women's representation in politics, in political positions is to have some reservation for women. For example, reserving 33% or 50% of positions in parliament specifically for women. And in India also, since the times of independence and even before the independence, many suggestions have been made that we need to reserve the positions for women in parliament. Okay. Now, let's track this particular development from the start. So, basically, it has been provided that when the constituent assembly 
was debating the constitution for India. At that point of a time also, for the first time in independent India, the question came about the women's reservation in parliament. But at that point of a time, the constituent assembly did not took this particular issue very seriously because guys it was provided that India was becoming a democracy. Democracy that is the rule by the people and as India is becoming the democracy automatically the women will get their fair share even in politics. So it was not very much necessary. So in constituent assembly no such elaborate provision was made. Okay. However, with, within coming few decades, 60s, 70s, 80s, it was realized that the vision of constituent assembly has not been fulfilled. Even it was expected that women will get their fair representation, but they did not got proper representation. And because of that particular thing, in 1970s, many of the women movement started to raise the demand for women reservation. And in this particular capacity, see this thing, Committee on the Status of Women in India, it was constituted in 1971 and it, 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 it commented on the declining political representation for women in India. Now the majority, the majority within this particular committee, they said that yes, their representation is declining, they are not getting the fair share, but they were against the reservation for women in legislative bodies, okay. And they said that immediately giving them reservation in legislative body might not be wise, but first we should start at the base. And it was said that first in the local bodies, women should be given certain reservation. And what happened? Slowly, slowly the state government started to give representation, reservation to women in local bodies. And then guys, and then guys, there was one more, uh, that is the National Perspective Plan for Women that was formed. National Perspective Plan for Women was formed and this plan was formed in 1988. And it was provided that compulsory reservation is to be given to women in Panchayat. Okay. And when we came with the 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act, very clearly in 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act, it was provided that one third seats in Panchayat and one third seats in the municipal bodies, they are needed to be reserved for women. Okay. That was a good thing that got started. And this is the first place where women's reservation in political uh, arena was established. And we have seen that this thing has actually been extended by many of the state governments as well. For example, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Kerala, what they have done, rather than 33%, they have increased the women's reservation to 50% in the local bodies. And if I tell you guys, on the face of it, we find that though 33% seats are mandated, but approximately 47-48% panchayat members in India right now are women. Okay, so that is the place where a kind of a political parity is coming. But still guys, even in those offices, there are some practical problems that though women have been made as a panchayat member, but the decisions are being taken by their husbands. The Pradhan Pati concept has come. And because of that particular thing, it has been said that though women have been given the reservation, they got elected, but they have become a rubber stamps on the hands of their husbands, on the hands of their family. Okay, this is one big concern that comes here. Now, well, what we will do, we will see the arguments. This was a brief history about women's reservation. Now, we'll see arguments in favor that yes, women should be given reservation and arguments against that no, women should not be given reservation in legislative bodies. So, first of all, let's take the arguments in favor. Arguments in favor. Now, when we talk about guys, the arguments in favor, first argument that is given in this particular direction is that affirmative action, affirmative action, by which a level playing field is given by supporting a particular section. Affirmative action is important. It is imperative to improve the conditions of women since political parties are inherently patriarchal. Political parties are men dominated. Political parties, they always have kept men's concerns at front. So they themselves will not bring more women. So imposing some kind of obligations in the form of reservation is the only way to bring the to give women more justice. So it actually happens to be important one. Second reason that has been given here is that guys, if we see women are still underrepresented in parliament, women are still underrepresented in parliament and if women uh, and if women are given the adequate number of seats reservation, they can form a very strong lobby. They can form a very strong grouping in parliament and will fight for the concerns of women which are often ignored. So it will make parliament more gender sensitive if we will reserve certain seats for women. Then after that particular thing guys, many of the economists such as the Esther Duflo, Raghav Chattopadhyay, they have found that yes, 
many number of times there are certain arguments that have been made for example that we reserved the seats for women let's say in panchayat and uh, what has happened women have just become the rubber stamps they are the elected ones but the decisions are being taken by their husbands we often criticize this reservation but they said that for example west bengal and rajasthan are the two states where this particular allegation comes that women leaders were rubber stamps on the part of their husbands or fathers but still though they are rubber stamps but women have got enough of autonomy that they can influence the buying decisions of that particular family okay it is being provided that what is happening today today we find these particular thing that in these particular states women are more likely to invest in goods that were important to the interest of the women and women are also able to uh, to insist on certain things for example sending girls to the school ensuring that the girls complete the minimum schooling and all such kind of a things so even though they are rubber stamps but still they got considerable power with a uh, fine this is something moreover it has been provided today we see high percentage of crimes against women low participation of women in workforce low nutrition level of women skewed sex ratios crime against women are increasing and for that particular concern for that particular concern it has been provided it has been provided that we need to bring more and more women in decision making okay they can only change this after that it has been provided that giving women reservation is not only is not only giving them equal representation but also it is very much important to challenge the entrenched interest in india's polity by the powerful people so powerful people's interest has got entrenched they have got deep rooted we need to shake that up also we need to disturb that also and for that women are to be given reservation okay then there are arguments against there are the arguments against that are there now what are arguments against so arguments against the first idea that comes in this particular direction just a minute the first idea that comes in this particular direction is that reserving the seats for women will go against the principle of equality okay so when we talk about equality we say that equal treatment should be given even on the basis of sex but here you are talking about giving more seats to the women so it will go against the idea of equality this is one problem then next thing it has been provided that if say women got elected on the reserved seats the women will not get enough of respect it will be said that they only won because of the reservation and not because of the merit and at ultimately what happened it will lower the status of women in society so it will be counterproductive so the seats should not be reserved then second argument that is given in this particular direction is that guys basically when we talk about the women women are not a homogeneous community women are not a homogeneous community all women are not same women some women belong to high a high caste some women belong to low caste some women come from upper economic sections of society some women come from lower section of society so women is not a homogeneous group within women also there is a lot of heterogeneity that is there so treating entire women group as one and giving reservation to all of them might not be a correct approach this is something that has been provided then third it has been also been provided that then it has also been provided that reservation of seats in parliament would restrict the choice of voters to women candidates let's say you reserve that uh, let's say you say 33% of the seats are to be reserved for women it means that on 33% of constituencies only women will be contesting okay let's say 33% there let's say there is a constituency and this constituency is let's say reserved for the women so it means that the all the political parties need to field a women candidate only that is one now what it will do it will empower women but it will restrict the voters choices it will restrict the voters choices that has been provided so therefore it has also been provided that so therefore it has also been provided that in this place rather in leadership we need to bring more and more women then fifthly there is also one more argument that is given that it will disturb the ideal family because ideal family okay now i am not saying that this is an ideal family but society often thinks that ideal family is one where the man is a breadwinner and the women is one which is doing the care work this is what has been considered as an ideal family okay that type of ideal family will be broken by this particular thing this is one argument that has been given though obviously not a very sound argument okay so that is all about this particular thing guys i hope that you have understood this entire article and now we'll move to next article and before that guys i will please uh, request you to please like the video because uh, see it takes a lot of hard work 
for us to prepare these notes and to stream this video so please do like the button and by liking this video you can help our channel to grow okay let's take some of the doubts Uh, okay, there is one question. Uh, they are God gifted that they can take care of their child. What's wrong in that? Okay, Manish, see, what is wrong in that they are God gifted and they can take care of the child? The point is that this is gender stereotyping. This is gender stereotyping. In gender, now understand this particular thing. When we gender stereotype that this particular person can do this thing only, this particular person can do this particular thing only, we are closing the avenues for these people to do something else. Everyone is unique. Are you getting it or not? Now understand, point is that from the ancient times, women, because they have been called as they are God gifted, because it has been said that they can take care of the children, they have been kept away from the decision making positions. And often because of that particular thing, we have seen that even the laws have been often against the women, for example, the adultery law. The point is that now the time has passed that only one particular, see, today the fathers can be good caregivers, so the male can be equally good caregivers, okay, that can be true. So, fixing that one particular person is caregiver, other is good in that, it is gender stereotyping, which should be avoided. Okay, sir, committee name related to women reservation. Lakshmi, please uh, see the handout and there it has been given. You can uh, see that one. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, current procedure for inclusion on ST list, adequate government. Okay. okay, guys, one more thing I want to tell you that this handout which we are using here is available on our Telegram channel. Link for Telegram channel is given in description box. You, so, you can download it from there. Okay, now, current procedure for inclusion on ST list, adequate government. We will see this particular article with respect to GS paper number 2, issues of social justice. Issues of social justice. Okay, sir, why we are restricted to vote to the particular section like SC and ST in the election? Sir, why we are restricted to vote to the particular section? Okay, no, who says we are restricted? Okay, so there are certain constituencies which are reserved for them. So, in those constituencies, only the members belonging to the SC or ST community will be floated. But other constituencies are not reserved. So, we are not res restricted. Okay, okay, ha, yes, however, some constituencies are there where certain seats are reserved, particularly ST. Certain constituencies are reserved for STs. Now, these are those constituencies where population of STs more. Fine. Okay. The current procedure for inclusion on ST list adequate government. Now, see, this particular contro uh, this particular issue is going on for nearly one year now. What has happened? Supreme Court at uh, repeated instances observed that phenomena or a procedure of adding a community in ST list is not adequate. It has some problems. Okay. So, what is happening here? The government is saying that no. Tribal Affairs Ministry is saying that no. There is no problem. But Supreme Court said that yes, there is a problem. We need to reform that. So, here what has happened? Again, the government had said that the procedure is correct. There is a no problem. Okay. Now, let's understand that what is the procedure first of all. Okay, let's understand that what is the procedure. Okay, so basically, uh, let's say guys that there is a particular community which is to be added to the ST list. Let's say there is a tribe and the tribe right now is in the ST list and we need to add it in the scheduled tribe list. So, how this particular phenomena, how this particular process begins? Now, the process starts at the level of the state government or at the level of the union territory. Now, first of all, the state government will identify that, okay, this particular community we need to include into the ST list. So, what they will do? They will identify such a community, okay, and they will send that particular proposal to Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Then, Ministry of Tribal Affairs will study that particular proposal and after studying that proposal, Tribal Affairs Ministry will, sell, will send the proposal to Registrar General of India. And Registrar General of India will then study that particular proposal. Then, Registrar General of India if it approves that yes, this community can be added into the ST list, we will send that particular proposal to National Commission for Scheduled Caste or the National Commission for Scheduled Tribe. Fine, if it is an SC, they will send it to the National Commission for Scheduled Caste. If it is an ST, they will send it to the National Commission for Scheduled Tribe. This is one thing. Okay. Now, after 
the National Commission of Scheduled Tribe, let's say, has cleared that particular proposal, then that particular proposal will again send back to the union government. Then the government will, will introduce it uh, to the cabinet. Cabinet will finally approve that particular bill. Okay. And then guys, what will happen? That particular proposal will be sent to the president's office. Will be sent to the president's office. And president office will issue a notification. Will issue a notification if it is a scheduled caste, Article 341. And if it is a scheduled tribe, Article 342. Okay. And after that particular notification, the community get added into the ST list. Okay. Moreover, uh, there is also the bill that has to be raised. That is... The constitution scheduled caste order, fine if it is a scheduled caste and the constitution scheduled tribe order 1950, it has to be amended and that amendment has to be done after president's assent. So this is the process of adding the scheduled tribe into the, uh, this is the pro procedure of adding a tribe into the scheduled tribe list. Okay. Now when we talk about the present times, so as of census of 2011, there are 705 ethnic groups which are listed as scheduled tribes under article 342 this is the thing now majorly what are the things that are seen by the registrar general of india what are the things that are seen by the national commission for scheduled tribe the things that they see to give a scheduled tribe status is the ethnological traits their ethnicity their ethnic lineage all these things their traditional characteristics what they have been traditionally doing whether they are, are the uh, they are the nomadic tribes whether they have done agriculture whatever they have done Distinctive culture, what a distinctive thing they have there in culture, whether they are geographically isolated or not, whether they are backward, all these things are seen. Okay. Now, basically the problem that comes here is that guys, see when we talk about the procedure of adding a tribe into the scheduled tribe list, this procedure is so cumbersome, the procedure is so tedious, so lengthy that often it takes so much of time because before a community is added into the ST list. And this particular thing has been questioned by Supreme Court and multiple other committees have also said that what we need to do, we need to reform this entire process of adding communities in the scheduled tribe list. Okay, so they have provided this particular thing. So Supreme Court wants to fix a foolproof parameter. It is being said that many of the communities are there which are not backward, which had got mainstreamed, but still they are added in the scheduled tribe list. Okay. So this is something that has been there. Uh, fine, I hope guys that you have understood it and now we'll move to uh, next article. So this is the thing. Please download these notes and please refer to it. This is the entire procedure that how the scheduled uh, the, the tribes are added to the scheduled tribe list. Now moving to next article. Sharp divides. Sharp divides. Okay. So this particular article is talking about the AUKUS Pact. AUKUS Pact. And we'll see this particular article with respect to GS paper number 2. International groupings, international groupings, international affairs. Okay. And in this particular article, we'll not just be tracking the AUKUS Pact's development. Rather, we will also see that how India will be impacted in this entire development. Let's start with that. Okay, so basically, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about the AUKUS. So, AUKUS stands for Australia, UK and USA. Under this AUKUS Pact, UK and USA, UK and US, they will provide Australia the capabilities to acquire nuclear-powered submarines. Why nuclear-powered submarines? Because nuclear-powered submarines have more capabilities they can patrol bigger regions bigger oceans bigger seas now from the past uh, uh, from the from the past couple of years uh, the western world particularly the usa they are propo proposing rule based indo pacific region now why they are proposing rule based indo pacific region because they say that the china might be a threat in the rule based indo pacific region china might become a hegemon so to keep china at a distance they are coming and becoming more and more active in indo pacific and due to geographical position of australia australia is now to be equipped that they can they have a more capability to keep a surveillance in indo indo pacific region and for that they need to have state of the art submarines and therefore nuclear powered submarines are to be given to Australia and UK and US have come together. So this is an AUKUS pact. 
and recently a joint appearance have been made by the Australia, UK and US on this particular thing. Now, first of all, when we talk about this AUKUS Pact, this, uh, this AUKUS Pact has been unfolded in three phases. Number one, number one, what happened? Uh, firstly, in September 2021, in September 2021, for the safety, security and rule-based order in Indo-Pacific region, this AUKUS agreement was conceived. Okay. Now, what happened <laughs> this particular year, 2023, USA and UK, the navies of both these countries, that is the US and UK, they also have embedded the Australian navies personnel. So, US, UK and Australia, these three navies combinedly will be patrolling the entire Indo-Pacific region. What will happen? UK and US will also visit the ports in Australia and together these three navies will be training. Together these three navies will be training. Now, the second, this was the entire first phase. Now, in the second phase, what will happen? There will be the actual transfer of nuclear-powered submarines to Australia. Now, what will happen? UK, US and the UK, they will send nuclear submarines to Australia. So, sometimes USA's submarine will go to Australia. Sometimes UK's submarine will go to Australia on a rotation basis. And then what will happen? USA will also sell Australia five nuclear powered Virginia class submarines. So five nuclear powered submarines will be given to Australia also in the second phase. And then guys, thirdly, in third phase, what will happen? There will be a submarine SSN AUKUS that will be built and will be given to us uh, and will be used by all the three navies in interoperable capacity. So this particular submarines will be used by all the three countries. So point is that capabilities of Australia are being increased by US and UK. Now, in this particular capacity, why they are doing this particular thing? We know that they are doing it in order to contain China. But in this particular capacity, already the UK's Prime Minister had said that they have done this in order to counter the Russia. Now, Russia has illegally invaded Ukraine. Moreover, China is also growing its assertiveness. And thirdly, Iran and North Korea also is trying to destabilize the regional peace. So, in order to contain them, in order to reduce their clout, this particular initiative has been taken up. Now, obviously, as this deal has been finalized, China and Russia will not like it. And even in yesterday's newspaper, we have seen that China has condemned it. China had said that this is a wrong and a dangerous path. And Russia have said that you are giving nuclear capable submarines to Australia and this particular thing might lead to the proliferation of the non-proliferation treaty. This is something that has been there. Now, New Zealand, Malaysia, Indonesia, they have been, they have shown a discomfort, but openly they are not criticizing this pact. And now comes India. What is India's reaction on this particular thing? Now, first of all, India is not very much angry. India is not very much angry with this particular development. Why? Because, see, China is the enemy of US, UK, and China at the same time also happens to be a country with which India is not having very good relations. So, China is a common adversary to both India as well as US and UK. This is one problem. Second problem that comes here is that, guys, if Indo-Pacific will be made as a rule-based order, if it will be kept as a free waters, then India will benefit because a lot of India's merchandise trade passes from the Indo-Pacific. Okay, thirdly, from the very start, India has been briefed from the very start that, okay, this is a grouping that they are trying to form. So, India's confidence has always been respected. Moreover, next thing that comes here is that, guys, next thing that has come here is that, guys, that uh, India has a special responsibility that India needs to ensure that, see, on one hand, Australia and US, Australia and UK, sorry, US and UK are helping Australia, okay, one hand they are doing this particular thing, but it can also ignite the rivalries between the opposite camps. So, India needs to play a very productive and a constructive role and this constructive role needs to be such that confidence building needs to be done by India so that disproportionately it doesn't turns into a kind of a cold war thing, fine. So, this is about this article. Now, moving to next article. China, India and the promise of the power of two. China, India and the promise of the power of two. Now, guys, if we see this particular article, this article is written by Ma Jia, fine, Ma Jia, who happens to be the a Chinese ambassador, okay, and uh, the article is uh, written from the point of view of China, that the China wants to have more peace 
China wants to have a shared prosperity with India. But the uh, the narrative of the article is flowing from the side of China towards India. So this is going to be the tone in this article. So you should uh, be knowing it before reading it. So the article says that when we talk about the 2023 year, 2023 is going to be a diplomatically important year for India because India is going to lead two of the important groupings. Number one is Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO and number two is G20. Recently, China also have taken some of a important diplomatic steps. What China have done? China recently has held the two important sessions. One is the National People's Congress session of the People's Republic of China. And secondly, they have also convened the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. And these two groupings have actually kept forward the short and medium term horizon of China, where China wants to emerge as a developing nation before the centenary year, fine. And China wants to build their own capabilities, fine. So these two conferences have been held and India is also organizing the G20 presidency and SCO. Now, the article is saying that today China is focusing on modernization on all the fronts and Chinese modernization can be seen on four fronts particularly. First of all, China is modernizing and in this particular capacity, China is focusing on high quality development, high quality development and the opportunities is being given to not only, not, not, not only the China is availing opportunities for them, but the neighboring countries are also given the opportunities for growth and development. Next. The article is saying this thing, just a minute, the article is providing that when we talk about the China and India, fine, these are the two neighboring and ancient civilizations, okay, and combinedly 2.8 billion population is contained in India and China, okay, China and India are both the representatives of the developing countries, global south, global south, and both countries have actually more convergences rather than difference. Okay, so there are yes differences between the India and China. For example, the grouping that the both the countries favor. India India openly favors the quad groupings, quadrilateral security dialogue, the West, but the China doesn't like that. Okay, but still the common interests are more than differences. Okay, how the common interests are there? Are there? For example, when we talk about the India and China, both are developing countries. India and China both uh, are very much concerned about the cons uh, interest of the global south. Thirdly, both talks about the climate funding that should be given by the developed countries to the developing countries. Okay, all such kind of a things. Then further moving on, further moving on, the article says that when we talk about the development of China, first of all in 2022, China's economy grew by 3%, which was a huge because particularly in the post-pandemic world, 3% positive recovery has been great. Moreover, China has also increased the employment. 12.06 million urban jobs have been added. Okay, so where the employment is a very big problem in the entire world, China is adding to the jobs. Second thing it is being said that the China is also investing on people's well-being. People's well-being. It is being said that China has uh, reduced poverty. 100 million rural residents have been uplifted from poverty. 70% of the government's expenditure in China is going towards the people's well-being, leveling standards are being increased. Third, it has been said that the China has opened up to the global economy. It is being seen that in 2022, China's total volume in total volume of trade in goods. Okay, so China's exports have increased. China's trade in goods have increased and it has increased the growth rate of 8.6%. Moreover, moreover, it is also being said that when we talk about the China's contribution to global economy, because China's economy is growing good, because of that particular thing, it has been said that because China's economy is growing good, it is also uplifting the global economy. So in global economy, the contribution of China is around 38.6%. Then global economic contribution of China is around 38.6%, which is higher than all the G7 countries combined. Their contribution is 25.7%. So China is very important one. Further, it is also being provided that the Chinese President Xi Jinping has also proposed Global Development Initiative, where more than 100 companies have joined and it is called as the Group of Friends. Global Development Initiative, where the countries will join and they will propose the common concern areas and all such things. Okay. So this is something that has been provided. So the article is now saying that China has tried to usher an era of shared growth, shared prosperity and India will also cooperate. 
So this is the tone of this particular article. Fine, I hope guys that you have understood it. And now moving to next article. A sustainable model for women's leadership. A sustainable model for women's leadership. Let's take this article. Okay, uh, guys, this particular article is particularly talking about the concern areas for the women leaders. And the article is actually also talking about that how, how the women's related concerns can be addressed in the immediate times. So, when we talk about India, uh, India is home to the largest generation of girls, young women. Okay, so large number of girls and young women are there in India. So, India already is... Uh, a minute. Okay, so here we see this thing that India is today home to the largest generation of girls and young women. Okay, and we have taken a lot of initiatives also to empower the women and across different domains. For example, in education, we have tried to educate the girl child. You can take example of Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. You can take the examples of the Right to Education Act where across all the genders, the children are to be educated. Fine, in health, find many women centric girls, adolescent girls centric schemes are there. So health, digital, financial inclusion, leadership building, find many such initiatives have been taken. And all these initiatives are trying to help in achieving the sustainable developmental goals related to the women, particularly the SDG goal number five. Okay, now the article is saying that see, there are uh, at, at different levels, there are even more inclusion of the women is to be done. More female leadership is to flourish at certain levels where they are underrepresented. Particularly in ICT, information communication technology, women are not properly represented. Women often don't have bodily autonomy. On, for example, their reproductive rights are not enter entertained, uh, are not respected often. Women's right as when to get married, fine, and all such kind of things, fine. Their bodily autonomy is often not one where they feel empowered, okay. Their safety is a concern, their shared responsibility within the households. So often a lot more burden is imposed on women in the households. Now, understand this particular thing. It has been provided that to improve the conditions of women, we need to take multiple initiatives and in this particular initiatives, what can be done? So all these way forwards have been provided. Number one. Number one, it is being provided that EdTech, EduTech, EduTech, the companies, the EdTech companies which can provide online education, digital education, they are the one which can empower the women education wise. So it is being provided that EdTech can give the tool to bridge the accessibility gap that has been there in education. Often the schools are at a much distance, the colleges are at much distance and because of the safety concerns, women are not able to physically go to these locations. So the EdTech, they can provide the opportunities, they can provide the accessibility of learning to women, even into the tough terrains, even where the schools are not there. Moreover, hybrid learning model can also be used. What is hybrid learning model? Now see, uh, not hybrid is not completely physically going to school, not completely online digital education, but a mix of both. So this is something that can be done. Then secondly, it has been provided that by the help of technology, we can, we, we used, we have to scale up the solutions. We have to scale up the solutions by which language barriers can be restricted. Main number of times the education is not available in vernaculars and women often are not able to access the education because it is not available in vernacular. So the language barriers, cultural barriers, fine, all they can be broken by using technology. Then. When we talk about guys, the gender norms have been created in such a way that a domestic and care responsibilities have been imposed on women. For example, saying that the women are gifted ones, fine. So domestic responsibilities, care responsibilities are imposed on the women. And when we talk about particularly in education field, STEM, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering and mathematics, fine. In STEM, as well as apart from the STEM, in finance, in entrepreneurial fields, 
point it is believed that men are the leaders not the women so therefore guys we need to ensure that in these domains representation of women is there in adequate numbers moreover also in institutional mechanisms there are certain barriers by which women's representation is reduced for example maternity leaves are inadequate there are flexible working arrangements are not there lack of child care facilities are there in workplace so because of these barriers women's accessibility to workplace is often restricted we need to focus on that now the article is talking about the article is talking about that what we need to do we need to introduce certain initiatives by which the women's representation can be increased for example olympiads are needed to be organized in early age so that women can also get exposure in math olympiad science olympiad so that their inquisitiveness their curiosity in maths and sciences can be increased by that more women will come in stem then innovation labs are needed to be introduced at the school levels boot camps competitions fine they can expose the women so this is something moreover women also need to be empowered with respect to their bodily autonomy with respect to the decision making which concerns their body for example for example whether to have sexual relation or not fine when to initiate sexual relations whether to use contraceptives or not when to seek health care when to, to seek health care when they need okay how to seek the health care so all these are the initiatives in which the women are needed to be empowered further for empowering the women it has been provided that the giving representation of women in sports now sports have always been called as an excellent way of building the capacity of for building the capabilities moreover sports have also been an excellent way of promoting leadership self sufficiency making them understand the importance of team work and here adolescent girls are needed to be included so we have national sports policy we have national sports policy and in national sports policy already inclusion of women have been emphasized so we need to move with along with that now further moving on so the now the article is saying this particular thing that when we talk about the women when we talk about the women so women today they are involved in domestic chores okay they are actually they have been involved in care works caring for their loved ones they have are the backbone of families communities fine now the point is that labor unpaid labor work fine care work care work is often unpaid and that work is only imposed on the women now we need to move beyond this particular thing and we need to recognize reduce and redistribute the unpaid care work not only it's women responsibility but men also need to come here and they need to contribute in this particular direction then further talking about the article provides this particular thing that the policies that provide for services social protection basic infrastructure for the women such kind of policies are needed to be promote and for this particular thing multi prong opportunities are needed firstly they need to get educated secondly they need to pro provide employment then they need to be promoted in leadership so all these particular suggestions have been given so guys it is a well balanced written article concerning almost all the areas of the women fine so a good article now moving to the next article brahampuram as a policy game changer for kerala now this particular article guys we will see with respect to the gs paper number 1 urbanization and the challenges related to urbanization the gs paper number 1 urbanization and the challenges related to urbanization now the article is actually talking about the recent incident we have discussed this incident yesterday text and context paper also section also we have seen that in kerala in kerala there is brahampuram and brahampuram is in the on the outer fringes of the kochi in kerala and here there is a landfill and this landfill is on fire okay and this fire is going on for so many of the days so it has been said that such kind of a thing has led to a lot of problem number one guys it has impact now the schools have to be shut down because this particular fire can harm the children it can go out of proportion okay moreover ad residents are advised to wear masks because of the environmental pollution environmental uh, damage that is being done by these fire which is going on okay now the article is saying that why these this fire got started in this landfill site so this brahampuram fire has shown that there is a very poor public service in the form of the waste management okay waste management is not properly being held and as this fire had got started it has also induced a deep sense of insecurity among the public okay moreover in the 
from the point of view of environment also this failure has also been shown in effective regulation of a harmful activity there is no arrangement in an, in kerala no arrangement no scientific disposal of garbage government machinery also appears to be unconcerned and incapable so some suggestions are there now guys i have specifically taken those points which can be used for all the questions coming in this particular direction so not only specific to the kerala but if any state no this is a problem recently in delhi also there was a landfill site that caught fire and that fire continued for so many of the days now see this thing number one understand this thing we need to the states the government need to understand that the responsibility for scientific treatment of garbage at the site must be fixed so on site processing of garbage is not taken up properly it needs to be fixed secondly garbage segregation by households must become a condition in order for a person to reside in the city now the households need to segregate garbage as wet gar wet waste dry waste plastic waste electric waste so they need to segregate their garbage so that it becomes relatively easier at the later stages then thirdly adequate funding for garbage clearance for garbage segregation also needed to be given okay we need to revise the municipal taxes that are being levied on properties and all such things and then finally it has been said that there also be a periodic independent review of the landfill site whether that landfill site can catch fire whether the waste is being properly segregated or not and all such things we need to focus upon okay this is all about this article now moving to the next article eurasian otter raises hope for jammu and kashmir stream now what is this particular article guys first of all uh this is the eurasian otter eurasian otter okay now what has happened eurasian otter it is a carnivorous it is a semi aquatic carnivorous mammal semi aquatic means that it lives in river as well as on land sometimes it lives in river sometimes it water sometimes it lives on land it is carnivorous carnivorous it means it consumes largely the other animals so eurasian otter when we talk about its status on iucn red list its status is near threatened its status is near threatened now photographs have captured the presence of eurasian otter in neeru stream neeru stream now neeru river or a stream it is the tributary of chenab river fine and by presence of the eurasian otter in this particular river shows that it is still unpolluted so eurasian otter is an indicator species it it shows the health of an ecosystem so if there is a presence of eurasian otter it means that the pollution is not much there and when we talk about this neeru stream it is the tributary of chenab river so in mapping based questions also it can be asked so the neeru fine it is away from the human habitations fine it comprises stony beds narrow valleys fine which are unsustainable for sand and gravel mining and because the mining has not been there it has not been polluted so this is something that has been provided if you go and read the heading eurasian otter raises hope for jammu and kashmir stream that it is still clean it is still unpopulated uh, unpolluted okay moving to the next article trade policy may be revised after 8 years from april 1 okay now guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the india's foreign trade policy india's foreign trade now the foreign trade policy is a policy which concerns the export and import of india and foreign trade policy is devised for 5 years now india's foreign trade policy was to expire on 31st march was to expire on 31st march 2020 and we need to implement new foreign trade policy from 1st april 2020 but due to the covid 19 pandemic what had happened the old foreign trade policy that is 2015 to 2020 foreign trade policy it has been uh, uh, it has been um, basically it has been extended from 2020 to 2023 is it clear or not so in total this foreign trade policy had continued for 8 years 5 year it's normal tenure and 3 year extension that has been given and now finally from april 1st the new foreign trade policy will come in place okay so when this new foreign trade policy will come in place okay we will see the key key points of that however as we talk about the foreign trade policy what it means foreign trade policy refers to the rules regulations procedures which will be adopted by a country to govern its international trade the priorities with respect to the import and export that it is going to give 
and it also talks about the tariffs, quotas, subsidies, regulations, fine, all these particular things are there. So now, now the new trade policy is going to come in place. So beyond that, nothing more you need to read. Okay, and now let's take the main practice question for today. The question reads, after the historic enactment of 73rd and 74th amendment to the constitution, the fight continues for women's reservation bill in parliament. Still it has not been passed. So this will be a GS paper number 2 question, 10 marker question. You can write it. Okay. So that is all guys about this session. And guys, I hope that you have understood the session. Guys, if you are liking the video, please do show the token of appreciation by liking and please do leave your comments. Your comments really encourage us, motivates us. Thank you so much. Now we'll meet tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourselves. Thank you.